In this episode, I'll use MatterHacker's Fill A Mint sample print to fix a TiVo Tornado and then compare it to some of my other i3 printers right here at Chuck Hullabuck's Electronic Products. This episode is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I reviewed this TiVo Tornado in a previous Filament Friday episode and I was having problems with it. I was getting shifting in the prints. So I decided to fix this and then I want to compare it to how it performs against other printers. I did modify a bit. I added the 310mm by 310mm Ultra Base from Anycubic and I was getting shifting in prints. Now it may be related to this, I'll show you what I found. I used some melting PLA Gold, 25% fill, 0.3 layer height, 215 degrees C on this print. You can see multiple points here where it's shifted. My first thought was maybe the current drive for the Y stepper motor was too weak. So I took apart the electronics box, got out my voltmeter, and I clipped the negative lead to a good ground point, and I found that here on the SD card case. For the positive lead, I stripped a piece of wire and I wrapped around a metal screwdriver. The metal screwdriver will touch the potentiometer and allow me to read the voltage. Now this is very low current so I don't have to worry about getting shocked or anything. So I clip that wire to the positive lead of my voltmeter and then touch the screwdriver to the potentiometer at the stepper motor driver and I saw 0.868 volts. So then I adjusted it until I saw 0.9 volts which was the same as what was on the X and Z axis. And I reprinted and I still got shifting at multiple points. It didn't look like it made a big difference at all. So this clearly wasn't the problem. One commenter to the video said adding the glass base was a problem. I modified it. And when I look at the weight of the build tack type material that comes with it of 99 grams versus the 930 grams of this glass plate, they may have a point. So I decided to adjust the acceleration settings which is something someone else commented on that they had to do on their TiVo Tornado. So I went to the acceleration settings in the menu and it was set to 1000 by default. I lowered it to 500 and printed again. And this time I saw major improvement. I only had shifting at the top of the head. The rest of it looked good. So I said, let's go further. So I dropped it to 200 and I got a perfect print. This thing looked great, head to toe. But then in the process, I noticed this. I don't know how I missed this before, this thing was incredibly loose. So I tightened it all up and I said, let's just go back to the beginning, back to the thousand and print again. So I set it back to a thousand and I got shifting at several points again. So the weight of the glass may still be an issue. So I lowered it to 500 and printed again. Now, you know, with everything tightened up, this looked fantastic. This was a great print. I was really happy with it from head to toe. So now I wondered how good was this printer now that I've fixed it and got it printing good compared to other printers that I have that are i3 style. So that's what I decided to do is compare this to those other printers. I chose the Anycubic i3 Mega, the TiVo Tornado that I just fixed, an original CR10 with a single Z-axis threaded rod, and the Prusa MK2S. All of these printers are under $600. I wanted to use the same filament across all the machines, so I used this pink PLA filament that I got with my Prusa MK2S. And here's the results. They were all sliced the same at a 0.2 layer height, 215 degrees C, 25% fill with the same Simplify 3D setup. The first thing I looked at was the bottom of the feet, and they all looked really good. This Mega, maybe a little bit too squished down, and then underneath their backpack, I checked for sagging, and they all had just a little bit. I'd say the TiVo was the best, Mega wasn't too bad. And then I looked at the hands, there was a little bit of sagging on the CR10, and also the Prusa. So that told me the cooling was off. The TiVo looked the best. It was the smoothest of the bunch. And then the air tube up here, there was a little bit of sagging on several of them. Um, Again, the, the best was probably the TiVo. Now from the top, they all looked the same. Didn't look any different to me from the top. All were great. The front face, the TiVo had circles around it. I think that's the salmon skin problem people talk about. The CR10 had some blemishes on the one side and the Prusa had just a few blemishes, but that would look probably about the best. And then the Anycubic had a big blob on the one side. 
Now the Prusa has its own slicer called Prusa Control, so I sliced another one with the same settings and printed it, and here it is. And the hands look the same. They're a little bit sagging, so that's a cooling problem. Um, the side here, the air tube, looks similar to what I was getting with Simplify 3D, so that doesn't seem to be a whole lot different. The face is absolutely perfect on this one. The face, I don't see a single blemish in this thing, so that was the best face print. But on the back here, there's this dimple. I don't know where this came from, so I'm not saying it's worse or better. It's just the slicer didn't make a big difference. So of these four printers and the two different slicers, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. They all were great. If I had to choose, I'd say that Tivo Tornado print was slightly better than the rest, except for that salmon skin, which that's a whole nother topic. So anyway, if you like this, maybe check out some of the videos that are popping up to the side here. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon. If nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time.